Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. It's Snapshot 21W14A and the Mojang team are back from the Easter holidays. And because of the holidays, it means that we got a smaller snapshot than usual. This one is about modifying the ore system to be consistent with all the other types of ore in the game. You can see here I've got gold, I've got iron and I've got copper. And I've been checking out exactly what has changed right here. This applies to all of the different deep slate variants. When you break these blocks, you will now get a form of raw gold like this right here or raw iron or even raw copper. It's all pretty straightforward and that is the same for all the different variants as I just said literally a second ago. But here's the thing, these blocks used to drop themselves and then you would smelt them into ingots. And so you can still obtain the block themselves if you want that texture using Silk Touch. As you can see, it then drops the block back. And again, that is the same for all the different variants. Now, the big change here is the use of the Fortune Enchantment, which I have on this Netherite pick. This will actually increase the amount of drops. So let's go ahead and put our raw copper right there. And now from this, we only got one that time. And there I can see multiple items. We got an additional three. So iron and gold, for example, have always been one for one when you find them in the world. But now with fortune, you will be able to get more. That time we got one and that time we also got one. So I've just broken three, three of those right there. And you can see we're all the way up to 12. So fortune now works on gold and iron. That is... That is changing something that has been untouched for a long time. Over here in the furnaces, you can probably guess what's inside of here, right? Uh, if we chuck in the raw material, they convert one to one for the ingots that you can see over here. So I had a look into the loot tables of these blocks that I'm holding right here, and they all use the fortune enchantment in the same way. And the way that that seems to play out after breaking a lot of these blocks is that most with fortune free, you're going to get four drops and a little more often than the other amounts you can get, you'll just get a single drop. But the main thing here is that you're going to get fortune free on your pick and get some more iron and gold and copper overall. So let's take a moment to just take a closer look at these textures and appreciate them. I personally really like the gold texture over here. I think it looks fantastic. The shape is nice. These other two, not so much going on. And I wouldn't be surprised if there'll be some iterations to these textures. As you know, Jasper and Mojang are always listening to the community for feedback. So I expect to see some changes here. So when it comes to world generation, nothing has changed regarding the distribution of these ore blocks. I'm going to guess Mojang had probably planned this all along. And they knew that on average you'd be getting slightly more than we were used to. One thing that has changed in this snapshot, though, is the introduction of the generation of tough blocks at the area that transitions between stone and then the deep slate. So usually you would find this near an amethyst geode, but now you're going to be able to find lumps of this stuff around 0 to 16, and that's just going to help with that transition between the two different textures down here. There is also a change with oxidized copper. You will now be able to wax this block and we have some honeycomb in the dispenser to wax it. If I middle click, you can see we pick up some waxed oxidized copper. And if you're not aware of this feature, you can also do it as the player just by right clicking on a oxidized block to click it into the wax oxidized block. And over here in the stone cutter, where you cut your oxidized copper, you can also now do that with the wax oxidized copper. So that includes these variants over here as well as the original block. Mm. And the reason for making this change is because there are now ways to reverse the oxidization effect. And one thing I forgot to point out when I showed this previously is that the lightning rod itself turns white when it's struck by lightning. And another way you can do this is by right clicking on the block with an axe. And of course, if that block has been waxed, you have to right click on it to remove the waxing before you can then remove the effect like so. So now here is something I missed from the last snapshot that is amazing and I summoned a bunch of goats around here and they've all kind of wandered off and one of them was a screaming goat. So one of the things that I did is I looked at the entity data of the goat but I missed the tag is screaming goat. That exists for mm. these mobs that were added last time around. If we go ahead and summon in one with this tag, it will then be a screaming goat. And there is a 2% chance of these naturally spawning. So 1 in 50 goats will be a rare screaming goat. 
And as the name suggests, they do a fair bit of screaming. So we are going to listen to these hilarious sounds together. Okay. <laughs> oh, that is too good. And that one, that one is my favorite. Oh, that's a, that's a close second. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different ones for ambient. Then we have deaf. And there's a few variations here. And then we have hurt. And then last of all, we have milk. And yeah, I think it's just the one sound for that one. And I don't think there's anything mm. else unique or special about them, but it's a really cool thing to do for a mob, you know? Just put one in that makes some amusing sounds alongside the regular one. So if you're out there exploring and you hear the goats behaving a little differently, there might be one that you want to capture and bring back to your base and show your friends. So it might be a bit strange to plug the old subscribe button after I've told you I missed something in the last snapshot, but I'm only human and that's the point of what I do. If I miss something, I'm going to be telling you in the next video, so make sure to subscribe and catch these snapshot videos. And in last week's snapshot, we were introduced to the axolotl and the glow squid's natural spawning inside of the world. I was watching Il Mango's video on this and he explained what the game code is doing. So if you wanted to know exactly what the conditions are, both of these mobs need to spawn below the naturally generating sea level. The difference between them is that the glow squid is going to need solid blocks above it as well. So that will obviously mean that you are going to find it inside of waterlogged caves. And also in last week's snapshot, there was a bug that I didn't experience because I didn't head out to the end dimension where the terrain generation changes had actually affected the way it forms in the end. And I've got to say, there is a charm to this. This looks fascinating to explore, although really you're just looking at the shapes as there's not too many features here. But yeah, a very interesting bug from last week's snapshot. And just to confirm it in case you're wondering, in this snapshot things are back to normal as those changes were completely unintentional. And last of all, there are a handful of bug fixes in this snapshot, but they all relate to things that are misbehaving in the development of 1.17, and so there's nothing big here to talk about. So, a small snapshot, but a big change to the game. And of course, let me know what you think of these textures with a comment down below. While you're down there, be sure to leave a like. Thanks as always for the support. And if you're looking for something to watch, well, yesterday I participated in Twitch Rivals. If you want to watch that event, it's on my second channel, and there'll be a end screen card for you to click. You know the deal. Anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next week with another one. Bye bye.